Hey, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, we're going to be playing with a brand new eyeshadow palette. I'm going to be coming up with this fun look as well as one other look. And I'm really excited to share this with you. It is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Norvina volume number six. You know, when I first saw this palette, I wasn't going to grab it. But I do own all except for one of these bigger style um, ABH Norvina palettes. I really enjoy them. I think the quality is fantastic in these. And I really wanted to kind of add this to my collection. I had a really fun time playing with this. Spoiler alert. Uh, but I can't wait to share the looks with you. Show you how I came up with them. If that sounds interesting, please be sure to stick around. But if you're just now making it to my channel and you're not subscribed yet, maybe you've been lurking a little bit watching some other videos of mine and been enjoying them, please tap that subscribe button if that's the case. Ring the notification bell so you don't miss future uploads. Let's get into this palette. First of all, look at the packaging on this. Look how pretty that is. I hate that you can see like all like the, the fingerprints on it because it's black and it's really slick, but it's got really beautiful packaging. Um, it's kind of holographic, like the moon, the moon, that's not the moon. <laughs> Anyway, I haven't done the base makeup, but I'm not going to do that on camera with you. Today is strictly about the palette. Uh, I guess I can show you the inside of it, just in case you haven't seen it yet. She's a beaut. I hope it's coming across the right way on camera, but it is beautiful. It's like pastels. Um, it's got grunge at the bottom. We've got a little bit of neon action going on. It's a little bit of everything, and it's very colorful. Actually, when I first looked at this, I thought it almost looked like a mixture between the blue palette, the purple palette, and the orange palette all in one. Does it not? With some like grungy shades thrown in there. Anyhow, I've also heard this compared to the Blend Bunny Surge palette, which I do have. Let me just show you that one. I mean, I see the comparison, but it's really not comparable in my opinion. The most comparable thing about it is the grungy row. Actually, <laughs> maybe I'm going to eat my words now that I'm looking at this. No... Because there's, first of all, there's more shimmers in the Surge palette. There's an entire row. I think the overall premise of the two palettes is very similar, but that's about it. I don't think when you look at the two, I don't have my contacts in, so it's hard to see, but I don't think they look similar enough. I do like how they both have that grungy row that you can really deepen up a look with because I'm all about the depth. If you guys have been here for a while, you know that. I really like to be able to make something smoky, um, give a lot of dimension to a look. So anyhow, this is a $60 palette, which is a pretty penny. This will be a first impression with you all. I haven't used um, this one yet, but it's so pretty. I can't wait to play with it. I'm also thinking about maybe incorporating some of my Terra Moon shades in here, my single sparkly shades just because it really amps up a look and I'm not very good at just all matte looks. And when you're looking at this palette, it's got pretty much all mattes, except for you've got a glitter here, which not my favorite. I could do without the glitter. I thought that this one was a shimmer. I thought it was a really sparkly blue. It's another glitter. Again, I could do without that. So there's only two shimmer shades in here that I'm ever going to use. I'm not probably more than likely not going to use the glitter shades. So this for me is, is basically an all matte palette. I'm not going to swatch them. I'm sure there's going to be plenty of other places where you, where you see swatches or I might just enclose pictures. That way you all can see them. Um, I just want to get to playing. So I am going to be using the Anastasia Beverly Hills eye primer just because kind of makes sense to use their primer with their eyeshadow formula. Just keep in mind that an eye look looks really different once you've put lashes and have done some under eye work and eyeliner and all that stuff. So the first, at least the first look or two, I'm not going to do all that because I'm just going to be taking them right back off and then doing a final look where I do the rest of my makeup off camera. So just keep that in mind as we're doing these looks. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is take my Sonia G Builder Pro. Now I do want to just give a slight heads up. I don't have contacts in because my eyes have been really bothering me here over the past couple months. For whatever reason, it doesn't matter how long I have my contacts in for. It could be like two hours they start bothering me after two hours. So I don't know what I've done or what's going on. It's specifically my left eye. So I've been really trying not to wear my contacts as much as I was. Um, but I'm going to have to wear them at some point throughout the video so you can actually see and I can actually see what the hell I'm doing. Anyway, dipping into E1, I'm just going to start packing that out here. Can you guys see? Ooh. She pretty. 
It is like super windy outside. It is so hard to see without contacts in. I would love to get LASIK. If I can ever afford it one day, I'm gonna do that. My vision is so bad that I have a mirror right in front of me and I can't even make anything out. Like I have to have a hand mirror to see what I'm doing. I I'm probably gonna be legally blind by the time I'm 40. <laughs> well, that's pretty soon. By the time I'm 50. Okay, I'm gonna take a rougher brush by the way, Ruffer's having an amazing sale right now. I only have a couple brushes from them, but I really like the ones I have. Thought about purchasing more and then I had to like smack my own hand and say, no, you don't need them. You got lots of brushes, <laughs> but they're having a 40% off sale. So if Ruffer is a brand you've been wanting to try, now is the time to do it because they are 40% off, which is an amazing sale. And if I wasn't trying to be so conscious of my spending at this current moment, I would have already bought some more myself because um, I only have a couple, but they're fantastic. So anyway, this is the Refer 14, and I'm just going to drag that forward a little bit. Kind of start blending. Or trying to blend. I mean, so far, beautiful purple. It's not patchy. It blended really nicely. So far, so good. That's one color. I kind of want to take this pink right here. This pink? Yeah, I kind of want to take this pink and maybe pack it on top of the purple and start blending upwards. I'm just having a good time. I'm just playing around. Oh, well, there goes the, the mirror. Just over here breaking shit. Don't mind me. Ooh, or do I want to do this one? Because this pink might be a little dark. It is. Okay, I take it back. I take it all back. I'm going to go in with this shade here. This is D4, and it's a really beautiful... How would I describe this shade? Mm, <laughs> melon? No, it's not a melon shade. I don't know. It's stunning. That's what we're using. I'm going to take that same rougher brush that I was using and wipe that purple off, or at least most of that purple off. And then I'm going to dip into that... I'm just going to say melon shade. It kind of reminds me of melon, sort of. And we're going to start blending out the purple with it on the edges, very lightly. Ooh. I'm glad I didn't go in with the darker pink. I think it would have been too much. I mean, what I can see of it looks good. I dabbed it again and just took most of it back off because I just want to blend the edges here. It is starting to look a little bit patchy, I'm not going to lie. Right through here. Oh, that's weird. It's starting to have troubles layering here. Mildly. I feel like it did something funky out here. Now I want to go into the orange because I really want this to pull more orange on the outside. So I'm going to take D1 and we're going to like blow out the rest of the outside of that shape with the orange shade. And I'll probably blend the edges of that one with A1, which is that matte white. Because matte white saves everything when you're doing a colorful look like this. I learned that in my Blend Bunny video when I did the Surge palette. Ooh, that's a bright orange. Ooh. <laughs> I get excited. I can't help it. Gentle. Gentle. When I'm going into an eye look like this, I usually don't know what the hell I'm going for. I just kind of start rolling and I see how it looks as I go. And so far, I'm not totally disappointed in this one. It's not exactly the look I was going for when I first started, but that's okay. We evolve as we go. I feel like these shadows would do even better over top of something tacky. Because this ABH primer dries down if you put a really thin layer down or if you allow it to dry down before you start. So I feel like these shades would perform even better if I used like P. Louise or something like that. Another blending brush that I really enjoy using is my Sigma E36. And I'm sure if you've been here for a little while, you've heard me talk about this. It just has a very tiny but like floofy end on it. It's really good for going around the very outside of an eyeshadow look. 
because it just diffuses it seamlessly. So I'm going to take this into that deeper pinky shade just to kind of see if I can get it better around here. I just want the blend to look right. And I'm picky, y'all. Like, I was going to add black to this look and everything. I feel like maybe I shouldn't do that now. Ooh, I like where this is going. Okay, and I'm going to build up that purple again, too. It did a little something funky out here, but the rest of it looks really nice. See, now I'm stuck. I'm like, what do I do now? I kind of I kind of want to use one of my special shades. The only shimmers we have are A3 and A5. So we've got a really beautiful, like, silvery. It's more of a topper shade. I've already swatched it. And then this really deep, like, blackened blue. That's all I have. I mean, the silvery shade might look nice. You know, you all know me. I like my shimmers. I like my special shades. But... For me personally, I don't need a palette full of them because I have an entire collection full of singles that look like that. So there's really no need for me to have that in every single palette. But if I'm just doing a review of only this palette, I hate always dipping into something else to come up with my eye looks because then it's like, okay, but I'm reviewing this palette, you know? You all are more than likely are not going to have all of the special shades that I have. So it just doesn't make sense to only do those types of looks when I'm doing this, you know, first impression review. Can you get off my light? Why, man? So I was looking at this palette and I'm trying to come up with a shade to put in the inner portion of my lid that would look bright enough and just would stand out enough. And the shade that keeps calling to me is B1. And it's this really beautiful bright sky blue. Like, look how pretty, look how pretty that is. I don't know if it's going to look right um, or go along well with what I have going on, but that's what I'm going to put down just because it's screaming my name. Now, I might even get a little saucy and put something over top of it, like a shimmery shade from my collection, just to have some fun. But I would at least like to try like a cut crease situation and throw that blue in my crease or in my inner third. So that's what I'm going to do. Here we go. Ooh, okay. And it's just pigmented enough where I really didn't need to cut the crease. I like that. That's such a pretty blue. I was comparing it to their blue palette, like saying that some of these shades look like they were plucked right out of that blue palette. I actually don't have that one. I have all of these palettes but that one. I don't have the blue one. I want it, but I'd rather grab it on sale, and I don't think I've caught it on sale yet. I just feel like it's missing something. It's missing that pizzazz that I love. But I don't hate it. It's different. It's not something I'm used to, but I don't hate it. So this is what it would look like if I left it alone with just this palette. I mean, I don't want to throw this silver over top. I really don't want to fool with these glitters. So I'm going to dip into my special shades. Just take note that this is the first eye look without my special shades. So I recently picked up some of JD Glow's uh, multi-chromes. And there's one specific shade that I'm looking at right now that is just freaking out of this world stunning. It doesn't really have that shine factor that I like, like that really metallic look to it, but it is very multidimensional. It is bright, like sea green. It changes to blue. It shifts to a purple. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it to shift for you all just because of the lighting. I might have to do it um, another way so y'all can see it, but it is... So freaking beautiful. Do you see that? It's a blue, but it's got some real shiftiness going on. Wow. Why is this angle so difficult? Mm. 
I think that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna aim for that one. It's very different. I haven't even used these yet. I just got them like a week ago and I haven't had a chance to use them yet. So what better time than right now, right? And I also have a, oh, by the way, it's called Luna. And then I have another one. Ooh, what? Oh, I need to like do a video with these so you all can see them. They are just next level. Like, are you freaking kidding me? That's curvy. Oh my God, isn't it? Ooh. Stunning. All right, I need you here. I'm going to take my son's opinion because he knows. Every time I ask him, he gives me fantastic advice when it comes to my makeup. All right, I need your opinion. The blue that's all by inner lid right here. I'm going to cover it up with one of these and I want you to tell me which one. He knows what's up. Which one should I cover the blue on my lid with? They both look the same. They're not. Look at look at the how shiny this one is. This uh, one's a little bit more dull, but it's yeah, got more it's blue. Like, yeah. But there's also purple in it if I you look at it. This one. This one? Yeah. See, that's not the one I was gonna go with. That one. I think he's right. Let's do it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. By the way, that shade is called Serious, and it's one of their new multi-chromes. These are a little bit more of like a drier formula. I like the multi-chromes that are really metallic and shiny and like they feel like butter when they slide on your, you know, when you're doing a swatch. This isn't really like that. These are a little bit more on the dry side, but they are beautiful. Actually, this one kind of reminds me of one of the Cleona shades that I have. Is it Regal? It's either Regal or Royalty, except for this one has a much stronger, like, sea green shift to it. It is just, whoa, almost dropped it on the floor. It's beautiful. I know this video is not about my specials, okay? It's about the palette, I know. But I showed you the eye look without my little special shade here. But I want to amp it up a little bit just for fun. Okay, taking that shade Serious from JD Glow. I should probably... Oh, it doesn't come off my finger. Okay. Okay. I'm going to have to use a brush, probably. All right. I don't know if the brush is going to work any better. We might have to put down some, like, glitter primer or something. Yeah, that's not working. Okay. Going a little too far with something that's not even part of this video, but it's whatever. I'm actually going to take some of the NYX Multitasker Mixing Medium to go over top of that blue so I can lay down this shimmer, shim, sh what? shimmery shade. I don't know why it doesn't want to like, it does not want to come off on the lid. I think because the powder is so dry, it needs something to adhere to. Now let's try it. Probably going to have to use my finger though. It's just really dry feeling. Not hard pressed, but it's just kind of maybe a little. There it is. It just won't come off my finger. Ooh, 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 what? I know this is not the palette, but if you happen to pick up these JD Glow Multichromes, you're gonna need something sticky to put it on top of. You can't say that shadows like this don't add like another layer of wow to a look, right? I can't help it. Okay, and I'm going to take that purple that we initially had and pack it back on this outer corner since we covered it with sparkle. Kind of want it to mesh just a little bit better. Anyhow, this is something more like true to me, something I would wear with this, the sparkle and the shimmer and all that jazz. Um, but this is look number one. I think for this video, I'm only going to do two looks. I'm going to wipe this off and then start fresh so we can go into the final look just because I do have other content I want to film and I want my, you know, makeup to be finished after this video is filmed. So anyway, one more look with this palette. I've been staring at this palette to try to come up with this second look and the, the shades that keep jumping out at me that like I need to use them. First and foremost, the shade B4, this really beautiful, kind of like a Gumby green, right? Like it's not like grass green, or like your traditional green, it's got a little bit of blue in there, it looks like. Just a smidgen. And I'm, I really want to use that. I want to use this really deep, like, blackened blue shimmer. I want to even use a little bit of the black shade. See how well, whoops, see how well that works. 
those are the shades that are that are popping out to me and maybe use some white somewhere to help kind of blend things i'm not 100 percent sure i just want to play and see what happens here uh, just fyi i do not have a lot of experience working with black shadows so this is going to be a little interesting but those shades are really calling out to me and i feel like the combination of those shades is going to look beautiful together so we're going to get it on the lids okay now that i look completely crazy with the eyes all blanked out <laughs> with the eye primer I think the first shade I want to go into, like I'm a little stuck. I don't know whether to go in with the really beautiful green or if I should go in with the black first. Let's do the green first. So the shade I'm dipping into is B4, that really beautiful green. I almost grabbed my P. Louise just to try that instead. But the other... I look came together okay uh, with this base so look how beautiful that shade is wow I would say that the shades are very true to life like sometimes when you put eyeshadows on they don't show up the same on your eye as they look in the pan and so far these definitely do I'm taking my rougher 14 and I'm gonna dip into that really beautiful green and just drag it up a little bit more. I gotta remember not to raise my brows when I do eye looks because of the hooded lids. Now I gotta go back in and fix it afterwards. I gotta take my shadow up pretty high. You can go around the edges with a clean brush and really get a diffused look by doing that. Like it'll blend out really well. That blended beautifully. And then what I can do, I mean, I still have to add black to it, but I can take, I can take that really beautiful fluffy brush from Sigma, the E36 that we used before, dip it into the white, and then lightly go around the outside edges of that if I brought it up too high, which sometimes I do. But that helps it blend into everything else even better. It just smudges the edges. Mm. Okay, now I'm going to get a little risky and we're going to play with that black. I'm going to bring this over a little further. Actually, should I just bring it all the way out? I can always cover it up or take it away if I don't want it. Let's do that. Let's take it all the way over. I don't think I've ever done that before. The big old green eyeball. Okay. I think I'm going to go into the rougher 13. It's just a bit, a bit of a smaller blending brush. And I'm going to like very, very lightly tap into that black. It is super pigmented. And start bringing it out here on this outer edge. Like it's so easy to get carried away with black. I don't know if that's the right brush for it. It's not really doing a whole lot. So I'm gonna take that same Packer brush from Sonya G. This one is the Builder Pro and use that to put some black down, but I mean, it does, it'll layer down. Oh boy. Maybe I'll just smudge it out with the other one. Oh, it's kind of blending away, shit. I mean, I'm not gonna leave it like this anyway. I still have a lot more to add, so. Not gonna give up quite yet. There's also a deeper green at the bottom. It's like a really deep green. Thought about using that instead of the black. And I might still add that on there. I haven't fully decided what I wanna do yet. Just playing around. Yeah, it's just picking up some of the green underneath on that outer edge. Sometimes pigments will do that. Even shadows do that. I mean, so far, I really love that. I just wish I would brought it up higher. I do that all the time. Ooh, so far that's what I got. I'm a little lost now. What do I do? Do I do the blue? So it's a deep blue. Hmm, maybe? And it does flip, oh, it's like, it is black, blue and black. 
Let's do it. Ooh, okay. I kind of like where this is going. I need to find something else to put in that inner third. Like, I could go with the white. I just, I don't feel like that's the way to go. <laughs> I don't have a better explanation than that. And I don't really like the glitters and stuff either. I don't like glitter, period. Not, well, not, that's a lie. I don't like big chunky glitters. I really want to put a special sparkly shade over top. You all be mad if I do that. I just can't. I can't with the all matte palette. This is more of a companion palette for me. It's really hard for me to just use this palette. Doesn't mean it's not worth it. Doesn't mean it isn't good. It just means I'm really terrible with, with all matte looks. Yeah, I gotta add something else to it. I'm so sorry. I need something to really jazz this up. Because leaving it like this, like, it's pretty. I think it's really pretty. It's just, it's it looks undone. It looks totally undone. So, that's what I'm gonna do really quickly. So there's a severe thunderstorm happening right now, and I just have this really weird feeling that we're gonna lose power. Do y'all hear that? That's my roof. It's raining. I'm a little worried. Holy shit. Okay, so actually, I'm gonna take the shade Phosphorescent, and this is from Cleona, and you're not gonna be able to see any kind of shift right here right now, just because the lighting is too bright, but after I put it on the lids and I create the look, or you might see a little bit, I can't tell, still can't see, um, but once I have everything on, I'm gonna turn the lights down a little bit so you can see how beautiful and like vibrant green this shadow is, but I just need something. Like, yeah, that's pretty, okay? I need something to really jazz this up. So I'm gonna take a beautifully bright green iridescent shade and it's gonna be pretty. <laughs> Look, I can't help it. I get really excited about my, uh, my special shades, okay? Oh, can you see that? Oh. Holy Moses. Like, can you see that in all its glory? I can't tell if, yeah, I really can't see it, but I, I feel like it looks good. Oh, I love that. Yes, indeed. I like that. I almost feel like I need to, to pack that black back on that outer corner. We're gonna do something here, maybe just a little bit. I mean, I'm kind of living for that. I think what I'm going to do is repeat this on the other eye before I lose power. And then I guess I need to do the rest of my makeup too, huh? I mean, I love it. I think that's so pretty. It's very sparkly. Well, it's sparkly because I added a Cleona shade to it. What's the matter? You scared? What's the matter, honey? Oh, my kitten's scared. Is that big bad thunderstorm scaring you? He likes to crawl on my, like, on my neck. What's she doing? Hmm? What's she doing? It's a big boy. It's a big baby. You hear that rain? Hmm? So, I'm gonna hop off camera, do the other eye, as well as the rest of my base makeup. And then I'll go over my thoughts with you all on this palette. Okay, so this is the finished look after I did the other eye as well as the rest of my makeup. I'm going to try to do better with putting the stuff that I'm wearing in the description box. I'm really bad about that just because it's super time consuming and I just don't have that much time. So today I will try to list everything that I put on my face in the description box below if anyone's interested, anyone wants to know. So let's go over my thoughts on the... Norvina volume number six. I keep wanting to say volume four. I don't know why. So as you can see, the eye look that I created wouldn't necessarily look like this if I hadn't used some of my, what did I use? Cleona? I think it was just Cleona. If I hadn't used those shades, it wouldn't look exactly like this. It looked very different before I put that shimmer on top. But I'm not going to use this palette all by itself. That's why when I do videos like this, as much as I want to keep it true to just this palette, I usually do add at least one shade here and there from somewhere else because that's how I'm going to use it in real life. And 
I do use my makeup. I don't just film with it. I use it on a daily basis. I love wearing makeup, so I'm going to play with this how I would play with it off camera, which is what I did today. Um, I really, really love this look. These shades were super easy to blend. The only issue that I had with both looks was it started to get a little weird when I like tried to pack that second shade on the outer edge. But if I was very light about it and I didn't blend, like I just kept packing, it was okay. It's when you go in and you really try to blend and it was just on the outer corner. When I did it in my crease, everything blended beautifully. So I don't really know what that's all about. Maybe these would perform differently over a tackier base like P. Louise. Uh, but I feel like they did really well over top of the Anastasia eye primer. So that is my experience with the Norvina palette. Do I think you need this? If you're somebody with a lot of colorful eyeshadows and you have similar tones, then no, you don't need this. Um, if you're a collector like me and you like having all of the Norvina palettes, then this would make a, a really nice addition to your collection. I'm excited to use it some more. I think that the quality is really nice. I love the color selection. I like using this as a companion palette to some of my other palettes. So thank you all so much for watching. I hope this was at least a little bit informative. If you liked this video, if you liked the looks, watching them come together, please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Not only does that let me know that you like this kind of content here on my channel, but it lets YouTube know, which means YouTube will push this video out there for more people to find which means more people might make their way over to this channel, and I am so grateful when you guys take the time to do that. But if you've made it this far in the video and you're not subscribed yet, I hope you consider doing that before you click off. If you do, hit the notification bell so you don't miss my future uploads. I'll catch you guys later. Thanks for hanging out. Bye.